I'm Judy Shaw for NYSE Floor Talk. Joining me today is Jay Woods, DMM of IMC. But before we get started, quick disclaimer, this is for informational purposes only, and we are not sharing any recommendations or advice. Jay, how are you doing? It's week five of working from home with the trading floor being temporarily closed. How's it going? Well, week five, it feels it feels like week 30. Uh, it, it's going all right. We're, yeah, we're getting, I know, right? We're getting used to the, the new normal. Uh, you know, still missing the guys more than anything. Uh, but uh, operationally, it's going well. Uh, this was a slow week in the markets, which 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 is good. But for us, you know, we we'd rather be busier than when you're at home. Uh, you know, it, it makes it seem extra slow because you don't have the people to talk to and bounce ideas off of. So frustrating, but good. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to getting mm -hmm. back hopefully very soon. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you mentioned slow week in the market. Tell me what you saw this week in the market. What was going on? All right. Well, I'll make it seem a little exciting because, you know, Monday and Tuesday, we were down 5%, uh, which gave back the last seven days worth of gains. So the beginning of the week was a little shaky. Um, a lot of that had to do with uh, Congress uh, having trouble passing the stimulus package. Thankfully, it did. We rallied nicely on Wednesday. Thursday, we rallied, even though the jobless claims numbers came out, another four and a half million Americans uh, lost their job or were furloughed for the time being. Uh, that makes 26 million in five weeks. Y you think that's a very big negative, and th this is where I try to explain my kids the market doesn't always make sense. It's it's a discounter. So we saw this coming. It was in line. Uh, the market rallied, uh, and then this was the tell for me. On Thursday afternoon, uh, we sold off. And why did we sell off? Because uh, one of the vaccines that was very highly touted uh, it, the test, the preliminary test kind of fell flat. And as a result, the market sold off. So that kind of tells you what we're looking for right now. It's not so much the economic data focused on the virus. And then today, today it felt like a summer Friday, uh, which is weird because where the heck is anyone going? It's, it's, we're all stuck in our houses, <laughs> but it was very slow. And then we had a nice little rally towards the end of the day, a uh, big ramp into the close, if you will. Uh, maybe it goes with the old expression, never short a dull market, and you saw some shorts covering. But we did finish the week down a little over 1% in the S&P and the Dow. Uh, so we, we've digested the recent gains, and we kind of had a whole hum week. And some people can argue that's a great thing. Um, you know, For us who are trying to trade this market, it's, it's a little boring, but it's a welcome change. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what are you looking at next week? Yeah, next week uh, we're still in this battle between bulls and bears. Do do we finally break it? Uh, you know, S and P twenty eight hundred seems to be the line in the sand. That's the level we've been paused around. Uh, we've been in that middle of the range from the the extreme peak uh, around Valentine's Day to the trough on March twenty third. Uh, the VIX we mentioned briefly last week. Uh, we've been watching that. That did sell back off into the mid thirties. So. Uh, it's good that volatility is kind of normalizing, although we're still at extreme high levels. Uh, so that's a positive. Uh, some interesting technical stats that that don't really favor the bullish camp. Um, if you look at stocks trading over the 50-day moving average in the S&P 500, only 38% are above the 50-day moving average. And then if you step back further, only 20% of the S&P 500 are above the 200-day moving average. So we're still uh, on the downside of the slope. And then the, the most interesting stat I looked at today was, was the relative strength index, the RSI, uh, which me measures whether a stock is overbought or oversold. And, and talk about a dull market. Only 1% of the S&P 500, that's about five stocks, are, are measuring with an RSI over 70, meaning it's overbought. None are oversold. In the Dow, nothing's overbought, nothing's oversold. So we are right in the middle of this range. We're going to see if we can come out of it. Uh, as far as economic data next week, uh, we do have a slew of earnings on tap. Uh, the economic news that, that's coming is still going to take a back seat. The, the focus is going to be, once again, the virus, the vaccine, and most importantly, Going back to the workforce, uh, all eyes here are, are looking at Georgia and other states that are now giving the OK to start, you know, getting people back to work. And that's encouraging. Hopefully it goes well. If that goes well, you, you may see a rally in this market. The fear is if there's another hiccup, we could sell off. So right now we're in that middle of the range. And those are the things we're looking for to see, if, you know, what's going to lift us above or below that 2800 level in the S&P. All right, Jay Woods, it's always great to talk with you. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk.
hey, always great to be here, and and soon enough we'll be we'll be doing it in person at a distance uh, on the floor, and I can't wait. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we will. <laughs> All right. Have a good weekend. Thanks. You too, Jay.